Well, hello again. I'm Drew Badger, the co-founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and this is episode 16 of the EnglishAnyone.com Power Learning Podcast. You'll have to forgive me today. I'm still a bit under the weather. This is a great expression you can use if you're feeling sick or just not feeling well. You're under the weather. And uh, my, my throat, I don't know, maybe something's wrong with it. I have kind of a sore throat, but I was excited. I wanted to uh, not just sit around all day. I actually got on a brand new exercise bike that my wife just got for the family yesterday. So I put that together and I actually, uh, you know, instead of just sitting down working on things, I rode on it for about 30 minutes and got a, got a nice workout. So I'm excited. And even though my voice isn't perfect today, I'm really happy to be speaking with you again. Anyway, today I wanted to do two things. One is talk about something, uh, you know, like language learning like I always do. Uh, but this is talking about the sweet spot of language learning, and I'll get into that in a minute. And the second thing we'll do uh, is I'll give you a conversation that Carlos and I were having. So Carlos is one of the winners of the Master English Conversation Scholarship Contest. So that's all finished now. All of those winners are continuing to receive lessons. They did a fantastic job. So now Carlos, uh, you can just get to hear him relax and have him uh, kind of enjoy him having a conversation with me. So we'll have that at the end of this uh, audio today. So let's get right into the sweet spot. Now the idea of a sweet spot is something that's perfect or ideal. And uh, you can look at it from many different ways and you can talk about it in many different industries or activities. One of my favorites is baseball. You know, I grew up as a baseball player. And if you look at a baseball bat, there is a certain spot right on the bat where if you hit it, it just feels perfect to you. If you hit the ball uh, really close to where your hands are, it can be kind of painful. Uh, and if you hit it at the very end of the bat, you also don't get uh, a very good hit on the ball. But if you can just, just kind of get right on that sweet spot, that perfect spot where uh, the ball is supposed to be and it fits perfectly on the bat, then that's when you can really hit the ball far and it feels really great. You know it when you feel it. Uh, so the sweet spot of language learning, uh, I'm bringing this up now because I received a mail from a Master English Conversation member recently who was actually asking me a question about something I said earlier. Uh, and I know it may sound a little confusing, so I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, I believe uh, this member was listening to uh, a, a previous video I had made talking about how you should be focusing on one thing at a time. And she was asking me if... Uh, is it okay to, you know, focus on, you know, let's say you have an article that you're reading and there are many, many new words in that article. So there are actually a lot of new things that you're learning. Uh, and what I wanted to explain to her, so I sent her a private message and we kind of talked a little bit, uh, but I wanted to share my answer with everyone. So just to make sure I'm clear, but to make sure everybody understands how it works. So uh, in general, you should be understanding at least... 80 to 90 percent of what you're studying and a good example of this is how I study Japanese and I'm kind of teaching myself to read right now. Now my spoken Japanese is quite good but I'm a, a really bad reader. I never really bothered to study kanji. These are the uh, the written characters. There are actually three different characters for Japanese so it gets quite complicated uh, and even though you only have uh, just three different ones uh, and two of those are kind of like the English alphabet so you have a certain number of characters but the Chinese borrowed characters that's many thousands of kanji uh, and not all of them are used in you know everyday life uh, but at least like about 2,000 of them are so usually high school students are learning about that many or a few more by the time they graduate high school so uh, I know quite a few kanji, but because uh, learning how to read wasn't really a priority for me. I really wanted to be able to speak and improve my pronunciation uh, and really have great conversations with people. But now I'm kind of going back and learning the reading. So what I'm doing to improve my reading, I actually have a blog post about this on EnglishAnyone.com talking about the best things to read if you want to get fluent in a language faster. 
So basically what I did uh, is I wanted to find, number one, something I was interested in. So it has to be something not about really the language, not like a, uh, a language textbook, but something like a story uh, or like a how-to guide, something like that that I'm already interested in so I can connect with the language more easily. And what I did was I actually found, and you can see this on the website, I found a collection of stories for children that are kind of comic books, but they're designed uh, to teach various things about history. So they take, you know, real things uh, like about Greek myths uh, or the Arabian Nights, which is the one I bought. And I've actually bought another one about like uh, Greek heroes and legends and things like that, like Hercules which I'll be getting to later. Uh, but the idea of the sweet spot comes in here because you want to be reading something without kind of losing the way you connect with that thing. I, I know it kind of sounds weird, so I really want to make it clear. Um, I guess the best way to explain it is, have you ever been in a situation where you're you're doing something and you're you're so involved in it, you kind of lose track of time? You forget where you are because you're so focused and you're enjoying that thing. Now that's the way learning should be. And the sweet spot of learning is where you're in that mode where you kind of are experiencing that, where the thing that you're learning or studying or practicing is a lot of fun, but it's still challenging. So you don't want to just read things at a baby level. I mean, you want to read something or listen to something or watch a video or something like that to learn, but you want it to not be too difficult for you. So it should be challenging, but not too challenging. And that's why I recommend people know at least 80 to 90% of what they're already studying so that they can get into the flow and they can really, we call it, uh, we talk about that being uh, kind of in a Zen mind state, Z-E-N, uh, where you're kind of absorbed by that thing and you don't really pay attention to what's happening around you and you can just enjoy that thing. Uh, so if you're reading something and you have to look up too many words and it's too difficult for you, then it can stop that, that good feeling that comes from learning. So while you're sitting and reading a new book or you're trying to figure out a new thing to study with, like let's say you're listening to this right now and I'm using a few new words that are maybe a little bit difficult for you and you don't understand them, uh, it's okay if you can maybe look up one or two words as long as you're still enjoying what I'm saying right now. But if you don't understand anything right now, uh, or you know whether you're watching a movie or a TV show or reading a book or anything like that, if you have to spend a lot of time going back to a dictionary to study things, it's going to ruin that learning experience. So the sweet spot of learning is when you can really find something where it's at a good level for you, but it's still kind of challenging. And you should be thinking about this not only for learning English, but for learning anything. So whether you're uh, you know, trying to perfect a new skill, like you're studying a martial art, something like that, uh, or you, know, you want to learn how to cook or do any other thing like that, it should be simple enough that you can understand it, yet still challenging. And so this is called the sweet spot. So I want you to think about that as you're, you know, you have to decide what it is for your own level, but you can try different things. For me, I, pre you know, I prefer comic books uh, and other things like that, especially for Japanese, because I'm not at that level where I could sit and read a whole novel and it would be easy for me. So that thing, you know, it would be still kind of difficult for me to read a longer novel, but it's something I'm working up to. So I want to get there eventually, but obviously it will take some time for me to get used to that. So when you think about, you know, getting into the sweet spot on your own, just try lots of different things. You can figure out lots of interesting things to read and watch and do, but just make sure that you're not having to stop all the time and watch uh, or look up, you know, things in a dictionary, that sort of thing. So just to make sure my answer is clear for the Master English Conversation member that was uh, writing to me and for everyone else listening out there, find something that's enjoyable for you. Don't worry about focusing on the language itself. You want to be learning something where the, uh, the thing that you're learning is easy to understand from the other information that you already know. And that's why you know about 80 to 90 percent of the new things that you're studying. Well, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about the sweet spot or if you have any recommendations for things, other videos, you can please um, you know, comment below this 
uh, audio if you're listening to it on EnglishAnyone.com or on YouTube, anywhere else. So think about those things. Uh, and now I'd like to just have you sit back and listen to a conversation that Carlos and I were having, just so you can uh, think back to when he began a year ago. If you haven't heard that, I recommend you go back to some earlier episodes of the Power Learning Podcast and you can hear um, you know, the way he sounded before. What's interesting about Carlos is that his English was already quite good, but he had more of a problem with confidence and his main goal was really making sure that he could push through, that he could carry through to the end. So I know he told me that he had almost quit, you know, a number of times over the course of the year, and I'm really proud of him for not doing that because language learning, it can be tough. Even if you have really good, you know, resources and you have time to study, it can still be tough. Each person has their own things that they're good at and bad at, and so I really applaud his effort. So if your English is already quite good uh, and you're really trying to speak, but maybe you worry about how you'll sound or you, you know, especially smart people, really smart people uh, can be some of the worst language learners because they always want to be perfect. I know a lot of people experience this. I certainly do. Certainly when I first began learning Japanese, uh, you know, I always, you know, I compared myself to other people all the time, like, ah, like that guy can speak really well or that girl has really great pronunciation. And after a while, you just realize it's your own thing. You have your own talents, you work at your own pace, and that's what you should be doing. So every day you have a goal where you move a little bit closer to fluency and try not to compare yourself to people that are way, way better than you. Use the people that are a little bit better than you and you can use them to, uh, to help motivate you so they can give you these smaller goals that you can strive towards as you're working towards kind of the, the bigger goal of fluency. So I will leave you now uh, to listen to this conversation. Just enjoy. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to comment down below in the comments section. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. I'm always the final. The no, I, if I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anyway, I'm but I'm, 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 I'm very excited guy. to be uh, you know, speaking with you. As always, I really love hearing your voice, and of course, your accent is always great to hear. <laughs> Kind of Latin American. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever watch The Bachelor, like we talked about before? No, I watched The Bachelor, but it's a, a woman. Oh, The Bachelorette. I, I think. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's ah, right. Ah, uh, okay. Bachelorette. Yeah, yeah. So the new, the because, new one. I'm sure you can watch know. it online, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's definitely no, not on TV in Japan either. So. <laughs> really, there are not many TV shows. Yeah, there's like a, a couple of American TV shows, but yeah, mo most of the stuff I watch is just on the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, actually, there are not many really good TV shows nowadays. Oh, you mean in general it's or like, in like El Salvador? No, in general, because ah. we have kind of opportunity to watch American or other countries TV shows, and they're like, like, I don't know, it's. It, uh, I don't like them because of their scripts or something. <laughs> that, well, I mean, there are no uh, story. Uh, ah, you them. don't like the stories? Like, huh. No, because there are no story at all. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like story, one story episode story. after all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, have, yeah. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Uh, like, no. Many, many, many friends of mine have told me that there, there is a good. TV show. I know. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's a. It's like a fantasy genre TV show with like you know dragons and knights and stuff like that. But uh, it's really really good, and the stories are really good. I thought it was like a video game or something. <laughs> it kind of looks like a video game with like. I mean, I, I I think that could become a video game, but it was originally a set of books, and now it's on uh, HBO. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I, I can, I can say that, yeah, yeah, HBO, yeah. Do you have cable or satellite? Cable, yeah. Yeah, you cable, get HBO. Have, yeah, but HBO too. <laughs> ah. I don't know. That is in Spanish. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's in Spanish, but we can have, we can, we can watch many of the TV shows that they, they put on, ah, I see. on air. I, de I highly, highly recommend if you want a good show with a good story, watch Game of Thrones. And the new season is starting pretty soon. 
movie. It is a long story, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's based on books, and there's already been, I think, two seasons so far, maybe three. I don't remember, but uh, but I was addicted to that show, <laughs> like watching it. <laughs> Usually when I watch a TV show, I don't watch it when it's on television. I wait for it uh, to be out all at one time, and then I watch it all together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's good. That, me too. It's, it's like the better choice. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. like because you could have a whole just like one day and sit and watch the whole thing and like really enjoy it. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember when I watched some TV shows here and then spend like two years watching I don't, know, I don't know, like 100 episodes. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, two years is a lot of time, my friend. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Anyway, well, while I got you here, I wanted to ask you about, um, so how your English has been, obviously listening to you talk right now, your English is much, much better than a year ago when you began the program. But tell uh, everyone listening out there a little bit what your English was like before you started with Master English Conversation. <sighs> Oh man, I can say that a year ago, yeah, my English was not like like you are listening to, yeah, yeah, right now because you know I, even though I could understand some words, some phrases, yeah, or even uh, following following a conversation, I couldn't really connect ideas, yeah, and because I was always translating, yeah, so I'm translating right now. I'm translating. I won't. I won't lie. Yeah, but it's 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 less yeah. than before. Yeah, I'm making I'm I'm thinking of my ideas right now. What yeah. I'm about to say, but are not, you thinking in English or are you thinking in Spanish? I'm, I'm thinking in English. No, ah, I'm thinking yeah. in English. And it's okay but, to 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 take time to think. I mean, I you know even right now when I'm speaking, I have to take time to think about what I want to say in English. You know, I'm not just automatically speaking all the time. I still have to think about things. How do you feel now after like having been in the program? How does it feel to be speaking? I know you've told me uh, a couple of stories, at least one in particular, about talking with uh, a homeless guy that was like from America, I think. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was it was interesting. <laughs> I never, uh, I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, it was a uh, homeless. It was like. Uh, Deported. Ah, oh, really? Deported guy who was in in the in in the U.S. like 10 years, uh -huh. and he knows his book. Well, actually, he speaks English, sp Spanish, and, and Mandarin. Oh, and really? Yeah, because he was working in a Chinese restaurant. Huh. And this so is an American he, guy. No, he's Salvadoran. Ah, so he's from El Salvador, but his English was really, really good. Yeah, it was. Was like we were talking. I, I don't know. I was like uh, talking with an American. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know, we, because he wasn't in, the, the, in that culture, and he knows he knows a lot of that. Yeah, and when sure. you know about the culture, you have the phrases and the idioms that they have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you feel like you are talking to an, an a native speaker, even though the 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 accent is not the same because the, he is obviously a, a Latin American guy. But sure, it, the the acts, the their idioms or the phrases, they was they were like uh, like not talking to an Salvadoran who learned yeah. English here. <laughs> That this is very obvious when you talk to people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand so, exactly uh, what you're saying. Yeah, that was that is one of the things I have. Uh, I'm very, I'm very grateful for, uh, because with with English, English anyone that come because you as a teacher has told us uh, many phrases. You know, in there are not phrases. There are in the normal speech of the Americans. Yeah. They're very common. And even though they are very common, you cannot hear them here in El Salvador. Yeah, Because exactly. they are not yeah. American. Yeah. 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 For example, uh, one of the phrases I remember uh, was when you say, kick the bucket. <laughs> I that. But yeah, I know exactly yeah, yeah. what you mean, and that, that's the whole point of the program, because, you know, when you're living in a non-native country or non-English-speaking country, 
you don't really get the exposure to that kind of language. So you can read some things or maybe, I mean, you get some kind of English in a textbook, but certainly not the conversational English that people are using on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. That's right. How, how has your, your confidence been uh, also? Like, because I remember you telling me before, like you, were, uh, you weren't feeling so you know, strong and confident before and you even thought about quitting you know, in the middle of the program. How do you feel now? You know, the, the thing is that we are always overthinking the, the, our ideas or yeah. our speech. And we, when, since we got the confidence to say what we want to say, we have no fear. Yeah. That's, that was the problem, fear. Of, I was scared all the time. I yeah. was scared about, about fails, mistake. Doing, uh, making mistakes, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Always, all the time, all the time. I'm not gonna say I'm not now, but is definitely I feel much, much better. Yeah, well, that's before. that's fantastic. Uh, I mean, that's the whole point of the program, really. I mean, you can't, and I, I can't make everybody perfect. Um, and that's not really the point. I mean, even the language I'm using right now, I'm not speaking you know, full complete sentences perfectly. And, and I don't think anybody should be trying to teach that anyway. Uh, but you kind of learn those things. And as you see how we speak in conversations, you, you see, oh, okay, this is how native speakers actually talk. And, uh, and you, we relax more and start learning more. And then that fear goes away. Yeah, that was definitely the, the, the thing I, I like from English anyone that come. When yeah. You were like with many people, like your friends, like your your dad, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your your dad is very funny. Though. Yeah, he's a funny, he's a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, he's always laughing, <laughs> like yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the apple don't doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I get my sense of humor from him, and we have a lot of fun talking together when we're hanging out. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any any final words of encouragement that you would like to give uh, to everyone else out there listening? Yeah, the, the the thing here is not to be worried about your grammar or your or your pronunciation. Your pronunciation. Yeah. The first thing here is to communicate your ideas. Yeah. And if you have the if you have the willing, you can find a way. Yeah. You no. Know? So I encourage you guys to keep practicing. That's that's the only way. You cannot you can ima you cannot imagine a magical way that you can yeah. you will be speaking a language overnight. Yeah. We're not perfect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I will uh <laughs> I will, everyone's there. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, I think people. That's that's really good advice for everyone to follow. And I hope you continue to do you know even more work. I look forward to hearing more about you know how things are going with you in the future. You can continue to mail me, and I look forward to skyping with you again. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, be, I mean, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not asking for for you know, uh, but it's 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 good to know that you are, you have become, uh, well, a friend. Yeah, for sure. And okay. hopefully, uh, I, I can get to it. El Salvador and we can we can go out somewhere together, have some fun. You know, it's kind of dangerous, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, maybe maybe but... we will meet in like Paris or something. We'll figure something out. <laughs> no, it's it's El Salvador is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should Many be places. you should be trying yeah. to sell El Salvador more to people. It's it's a great country. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a very good country. Yeah, it's a very good, beautiful people, beautiful places, beautiful yeah. uh, restaurants, <laughs> food. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, we are more people that are that are good. Yeah, than the other guys. You know, ah, I see. <laughs> we try we try not to think uh, the bad things. Gotcha. All right. Well, so, I will. I will keep that in mind as uh, as we we think about things for the future. But you have a fantastic day. You keep practicing, uh, and you will have a a new lesson set to have some fun with uh, next month. Okay. Now I appreciate your time. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Have a fantastic day, and I will talk with you again soon. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, Drew.